social media and how you can use it to maximize on your offline networking efforts, or what I also like to call old school communication. Now, contrary to the belief of some people, face-to-face -face communication is still the most powerful form of communication, uh, mainly because it's the best way to deepen relationships. And I, I'm not a sociologist, I'm not a psychologist, so I don't understand all the stuff behind it about why this works, but I think through human experience, we can all probably agree that um, there's just nothing that can compare to sitting in the same room with someone face-to-face -face and talking about our lives, uh, sharing stories, talking about our businesses, and how we can help each other. It just seems to build that bond in some way. Now, at the same time, I do still believe that other forms of communication, including social media and the telephone and, and whatever, is a way to strengthen those face-to-face um, -face relationships. And so that's what I'm talking about today. So these are just different ways that I've gone about using social media to help strengthen these offline networking efforts. And the first one would just be uh, using social media using social media to learn more about a person. So let's say you go to an event and you meet someone. Now, when you're going to a networking event and you're meeting with people, you usually try not to spend all of your time with one person. You know, at the most, you don't want to be rude, but you want to exchange information, get to know some things about each other, see how you can help the other person. I recommend that. Uh, and then uh, you want to move on to the next person. You don't want to take all that person's time. So there's still a lot you can learn about the person without even having to talk with them or at least get to know them more. So usually if there are a few people I talk with in a networking event that have kind of piqued my interest, I think we might be able to help each other out in some way or we have some um, common beliefs or hobbies or whatever. I usually go to social media sites to learn more about the person. Uh, generally, uh, either LinkedIn or Facebook would be the best way to do this. I usually find the most success using LinkedIn because most of the time, most professionals, if you're at a business type networking um, event, are going to be on LinkedIn. You can see a lot of stuff on their public profiles usually compared to where Facebook could be locked down, Facebook being a little more personal. And you can learn more about the person. Usually they'll put, um, you can learn stuff about their past employment history, uh, what their goals are with business. People do still put some personal things. Uh, on LinkedIn and if they are active online you can you can look at LinkedIn updates if they're on Twitter too or Facebook and just get an idea of more about what they're about and from that or at the same time I, I should say I would recommend also using that with uh, a referral partner so if you have someone who's a referral partner with you where you're consistently working with this person and helping get referrals for each other and they bring a referral partner to you or a possible referral to you you can first go to that person's uh, social media sites and learn more about them. And at the same time, I'd also recommend talking to the referral partner and getting more information so that when you go to talk to this potential referral, uh, you have a better understanding of who the person is and what they do and what they're about. Um, so from that information, what I would do is I would set up, uh, create some sort of conversation starters. And that means trying to find something that is common between you two. You might, it might be a hobby or books that you've read or you may be in the same sort of industry or finding something that's a common connection. Now, I wouldn't recommend when you talk with them that you say, hey, I noticed I was on your LinkedIn profile. I noticed that you like this. That may seem a little creepy, um, although the information is out there publicly. I would just somehow try to um, slip that information or a question or something about that topic, that conversation starter, uh, into your normal conversation with them and from that you'll start to create more of a bond and that's all part of um, one of the seven weapons of influence from Robert Cialdini who's a big um, power of influence uh, sociologist and scientist um, having to do with liking because we tend to like people who are like us and interested in the same things so it's a very powerful form of influence it seems simple but it's something you definitely want to uh, take into account uh, number three, I would say if you go to a networking event and you've gotten to know somebody um, to some extent, friend them on, friend them on uh, social media sites. And I would maybe start with just one. If you start, if you've met someone for five minutes and you're going and adding them on LinkedIn and you're going on Facebook and adding them as a friend, you're going on Twitter, I guess if you go on Twitter and follow them, it might be okay. But if you're hitting them on all social media networks, 
I personally think it might be a little overboard. I would say pick the one that best suits the sort of relationship you think you have with them or where they're the most active would be another good thing. Um, and uh, friend them on there and LinkedIn would probably be the best in a, in a business networking setting. That seems to be the place where you can go and reconnect with someone on there and get to know more about them and, and whatnot. At the same time, what that does is then they can see all your information and you are implicitly asking them to check you out. Now, they may not or it may take them a week or two, but since you're friending them in that way, they're more inclined to go check out your stuff without even you asking. It's sort of uh, what Frank Kern calls an implicit decision trigger. Um, and uh, at the same time, when you do connect with them, no sales pitches, please. You just met the person. You're trying to build a relationship. The main idea behind going to networking events isn't even to find clients. It's to go and uh, find people who you can help, and at the same time, they will be able to go out and hopefully find other people who can be your clients or resources or whatever. And if I find out somehow that you are uh, pitching sales on social media sites the second you meet someone, I'm going to go track down your LinkedIn profile or some social media profile and I'm going to do this to it. So there you go. Please don't send out sales pitches. Now, I really can't blow up your uh, LinkedIn profile or Facebook profile, but anyways, please don't do it. Uh, number four, uh, so when you're doing this stuff, when you're friending them on social media sites and uh, they're friending you back and, and whatnot, you get in their news feed, uh, you get into, you become more visible to them. So you want to continue to stay visible to them without direct contact. Um, and what I mean by that is if you're, during the times that you're not face to face, you can keep uh, in contact with them by posting your own content, you know, because at this point, if you're consistently doing a blog or putting content up online, being super cool to the market, and you're putting that out there and uh, online, it's getting into news feeds, these people that you've just met and become part of your network, they're going to see this stuff. And so it's just about making sure that they think about you once in a while. Your name just has to pop in their head and connect with whatever you do. Um, it's just a powerful way of doing that without even having to pick up the phone and call them. Uh, at the same time, you can also every once in a while be super cool and promote their content or their business. And honestly, this is a way that you can actually, I recommend that you do a sort of sales pitch because it's not coming from them, it's coming from you. So it's more of social proof, it's more of a recommendation. So you want to be doing that stuff every once in a while. I would do it every day because then it becomes sort of obvious that you're, that you're just going overboard. So it's just important that uh, you promote them once in a while and... Uh, do good things for them. And then number five is still follow up with direct content, still pick up the phone or email them once in a while, set up one-on-one -on -one meetings, get face-to-face -face with them, and the combination of doing that and being super cool, putting your best foot forward, combining that with the social media connectivity that you're doing in between the times that you see them face-to-face -face is going to be very f powerful and it's going to build connections, it's going to build your referral network, and ultimately it will get you more business. So uh, if you're interested in this stuff, if you want to find out ways that you can use social media to strengthen your offline uh, networking, then I recommend you get our free social media audit. Uh, with our audit, we'll go through your entire social media presence and come up with some recommendations that you can use, uh, including recommendations regarding this stuff uh, that you can instantly apply to your business. So if you'd like to do that, please click the button below, submit your information, and we'll get back to you within one business day. Thanks and make it a great day.